Well, the topic of the lesson is healthcare associated infection. During the lecture, I feel that some students will come. So let's start. First of all, what you need to know about healthcare associated infection, you can understand from the from the topic. It is an infection which can be contracted during applying of any kind of treatment or or maybe some kinds of investigation in medical or surgical conditions. Uh, moreover, healthcare associated infection is infection which affects not just patient, but patients, but also medical staff. So every infection which can be contracted during the staying in hospital or in healthcare, in healthcare uh, institution, uh, if you're a patient or if you're a doctor or nurse or staff, you and call it health healthcare associated infection. How this uh, subject appeared, how this term and this problem appeared? Uh, well, here we have uh, evolution of the of the definition for healthcare associated infection. First of all, it was uh, basically regarding uh, surgical issues, and namely uh, surgeons whenever they had some problems after a surgery, they were saying that it is a kind of purulent complication. Uh, but after uh, uh, after medical society started using this term of purulent complication, epidemiologists told that it is not really fair to call uh, to call it uh, complication because complication is actually something you cannot prevent. It is something you can expect, but you cannot prevent it. For example, uh, whenever you have an elderly uh, patient with uh, surgery, uh, it is a risk of complication during surgery, for example, thrombomboli or something like that, in which uh, it can, uh, this, this problem can happen and the patient can, um, can actually die on the surgical table. Uh, and it is a risk which cannot be really prevented. So this is why it is called complication. Well, whenever you can, whenever you can prevent something, uh, whenever you can prevent something, it is not complication. It is. Uh, of, but it is separate disease. Yes, you will have test later, but not today. Uh, okay, so purulent complication were dismissed as a term for this infection, and they decided to call it nosocomial infection. Nosocomial infection uh, is literally trans translated like intra-hospital infection. So it, it became a mostly popular name of uh, the healthcare associated infection, nosocomial infection. And basically, you can use it even now. But after that, uh, anyways, some people started saying that it is not really fair to call it nosocomial infection because it happens ju not just in hospital. For example, you can get this kind of infection during the home home treatment. For example, doctor or nurse is coming to to give some uh, ambulatory treatment to patient, and uh, also during these procedures, uh, the person can get an infection from patient or from medical staff. So it was decided to call it healthcare associated infection. Well, um, if we are talking about statistics, some studies are saying that about 7% of nosocomial infection are happening in developed countries and about 10% in developing countries. So rich countries are known to have a lower incidence of nosocomial infection than uh, developing countries. But it is not really all the time like this. Uh, for example, about five years ago in Moldova, we had a uh, percentage of uh, declared nosocomial infections, 0%. So how do you think? Uh, is it uh, good uh, data? Is it good statistic? Any opinion? How do you think? About five years ago, we had 0% of nosocomial infections here in Moldova. How do you think? Is it good or not? It's good. Why do you think so? Because you don't have infection, so it's uh, need to be good. Okay. But what I told... Had, uh, what? Because the preventative measures were good. 
Okay. Well, it would be good if this statistic would show reality. But actually, why we had 0% reported healthcare-associated infection was just due to lack of report. Actually, no one was reporting. It, is, it was This statistic was not because of good measures of prevention, but just because of zero report. And in this case, it is not really good. So whenever you don't report something, you don't put it on the paper, uh, and you don't have you, you don't really have any problem. Whenever you don't have any problem on the paper, you you don't have uh, anything to fight with. So this is why this issue became very important here in Moldova. But anyways, it is uh, it's a huge healthcare uh, issue all around the world because you can see that the difference between uh, developing and developed countries is not is not that big. So it is it doesn't really matter are you in the rich country or you are in a poor country, it will be a pretty high problem in your institution, in your hospital, in your country. Anyways, about 10%, up to 10% of people will get uh, this infection. Uh, well, if you will uh, make some researches, uh, doesn't matter in which, uh, in which uh, side of medical field, you will uh, find very often such uh, terms like CLAPSI, CAUTI, SSI, VEP, and so on. All of these are related to healthcare associated infections, like central line bloodstream infection, catheter associated urinary tract infection, surgical site infection, ventilator associated pneumonia. All of them are associated to some specific medical uh, procedures, like uh, central line blood catheter. Uh, urinary tract catheter, surgeries, um, artificial respiration, ventilator, and so on. Uh, well, which is the incidence? The incidence of healthcare associated infections in different wards. On the first place, we have burn ward. And you can see that uh, the incidence can be really different from, uh, from time to time. And here is the new question. Uh, why do you think the difference, the distance is that big? It can be about from 10 till 80% incidence in burn ward. Why does not that narrow, like for example, in surgical ward? Maybe because there is a, like a wide range of uh, burn, uh, burn conditions and burn severity. Right, very right. Well, the first, the first uh, line defense in our body, as well as you know, is, is skin. So before our body will uh, face a problem, our skin is protecting us against all the, uh, all the pathogens in the environment. So independence, how big is lesion, how big is it burn, how big is the surface affected in the patient, it will influence the percentage of the of the infection, the opportunity to get this infection. Uh, on the second place, uh, we have intensive care unit. How do you think why intensive care unit? Any opinions? Why on the second place we have intensive care unit? Maybe because a lot of people come very quick and, and there is no very separation between different types of uh, diseases and infections at first. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other factors? Actually, we have, we have a lot of factors here in the ICU. Severity. Okay, severity. What, what will affect severity? time um no maybe uh, because you will have to do procedures quickly and without um, uh, any measures like um like autonomy, uh, without a clean environment maybe and sterile environment okay okay so it was uh it was told we uh, at the time it was told that uh, we don't have enough time to uh to make all the conditions to be sterile or at least to disinfect everything? Well, time is critical here. That's right. Uh, severity. Severity will 
influence the ability of the organism to fight with disease. That means immunity is decreased, is highly decreased. Uh, moreover, why, uh, why we have uh, these uh, big incidents generally in hospitals of healthcare associated infections? Because hospital is a place uh, where we have big concentration of weak people. Every, every disease, even if it is a trauma or a surgery or an infection, every kind of disease will decrease the level of immunity. If you are getting a hospitalized patient, that means your body is already uh, more weak than it was before. So you cannot really fight as good as before with uh, infections. But in the intensive care unit, as, as well as you told, uh, we have uh, patients with, with more severe diseases. They require very quick action. They require uh, we, we don't have any time to, to make everything clean. And we have a lot of invasive procedures. If you will uh, think about, about these names, like CLAPSI, CAUTI, SSI, VEP, everything, everything usually will be about the intensive care unit. We will apply their catheter, we will, uh, like central line catheter, we will apply their uh, urinary tract catheter because the patient usually is not able to move, is not able to go to the bathroom. So we will apply catheter. Uh, and very often the patient is not able to, to breathe by himself, so we will need to apply intubation or tracheostomy. Both will be the, uh, the, extra, the, the extra portal of, of entrance for the infection. Uh, okay, and on the next on the next uh, place we have dressing room. In the dressing room we have decreased level of sterility, uh, and we are working like with uh, open wounds. Whenever you need to change the bandage, whenever you need to work the uh, uh, the surgical wound. Well, it is also quite invasive uh, procedure. So it will be on the next place. And just on the last place, we will have surgical ward, which on the one side, it includes, uh, it includes uh, invasive procedures like catheters, like ventilation, like um, surgery itself, which opens one extra portal for the infection. But in the surgical ward, quite everything is, uh, uh, is supposed to be sterile or at least disinfected. This is why the incidence is lower. But here also we have a human factor. We cannot prevent everything 100%. If we'll talk about etiological agents, uh, you will find that the mostly uh, common etiological agents in uh, healthcare associated infections will be uh, pathogenic and conditionally pathogenic uh, flora. For example, Staphylococcus aureus, is a uh, very is a highly uh, uh, spreaded pathogen and also other species of uh, staphylococci which uh, are conditionally pathogenic bacteria they are taking the first place well coagulase negative staphylococcus and staphylococcus aureus they are, they are taking all together they are, they are taking the first place on the second place we have acinetobacter baumani which is also which is also known it is also known as uh, uh, conditionally pathogenic flora next one is uh, pseudomonas aeruginosa also conditionally pathogenic uh, bacteria both of them are known as very sp highly spreaded uh, pathogens in healthcare associated infections and on the last place but also pretty often we can find ischia coli and i guess uh, these two bacteria, Staphylococcus aureus and Escherichia coli, are uh, two species which uh, are the mostly familiar for everyone, even not for doctors. Uh, I guess all of you heard about these bacteria very often uh, in your simple life, not just in medicine. Because Staphylococcus aureus is highly spreaded, like about 15, like about 15 percent of adult population are carriers of this pathogen. They are having it in its nasal cavity. This is why surgeons must 
close not just not just uh, their mouth their mouth with a mask but also the nose but the Shrikhia coli is a normal uh, normal flora nor part of the normal flora of the intestine so if you can find somewhere and especially in hospital you can find uh, a Shrikhia coli it's a very big problem it means we have uh, we have here active contamination with feces that means we have problem with hygiene in this hospital in this hospital or uh, problems with the responsibility of the medical staff. Well, it is a big hygiene uh, issue. Okay. Well, if you will uh, look closer about um, this bacteria, you will see that the main, the main uh, information about them, the main uh, feature of this uh, bacteria is um, that they are um, they are making part of normal flora, they are making part of conditionally pathogenic flora. And it is opportunistic pathogen. So uh, the biggest problem in uh, opportunistic pathogens uh, is that they are very they are very uh, resistant in the environment. If pathogens, are requiring the if they are requiring the uh, uh, the host to survive the uh, human's body is the best place they where they can survive and where they can multiply conditionally pathogenic bacteria uh, are very resistant in the environment which makes them to stay very long uh, even in uh, even with uh, within the treatment with antibiotics or uh, where they are gathering the um, resistance for antibiotics, multi-drug resistance, and also if uh, we are not changing disinfectant substance in the hospital, it will also uh, produce resistance to these disinfectant substances. Well, we have nosological forms of um, of this. Uh, infections. One of the mostly spread it uh, is uh, catheter associated urinary tract infections. Well, every year we know that more than uh, 13 uh, thousands deaths are associated with urinary tract infections. Uh, moreover, every healthcare associated infection will increase uh, staying in the hospital. If with a normal, uh, in another normal situation, you will stay in hospital as a patient about one week, uh, if you will get an infection in the hospital, your time of staying in the hospital will increase twice. Uh, well, for example, catheter is is to be changed every day, but whenever catheter is not changed, it becomes uh, a portal for infection. So every time should be introduced new sterile catheter. Uh, the same thing about uh, central line bloodstream infections. Uh, it is another portal for nosocomial infections, which uh, makes prolonged hospital stays and increase uh, healthcare costs and increases mortality, especially mortality because uh, uh, from the moment uh, a person has bloodstream infection, it becomes, it becomes the systemic issue because uh, since you have a bloodstream infection, it spreads all around the body. It can produce sepsis, it can produce um, uh, disseminated intravascular coagulation, and uh, it can lie. It, it can lead to death very, very fast. Moreover, it is more complicated to treat bloodstream infection uh, because mm, it puts under the risk big amount of bacteria in the bloodstream, and application of antibiotics uh, induces the risk of uh, uh, toxic shock if we will apply high dosage of antibiotics, uh, can be released and a toxin of some bacteria, which can uh, produce even worse effect than the bacteria itself. Also, ventilator-associated pneumonia. Uh, today, it's a very big problem uh, because of coronavirus. A lot of people are getting intubation. A lot of people are getting, are getting uh, artificial ventilation because of this uh, disease. Uh, so, uh, 
it is a problem that we uh, uh, in healthcare system a lot of countries are not having enough ventilators for enough amount of patients uh, well uh, it can also induce uh, some uh, some extra infections some uh, ventilator associated pneumonia uh, if the ventilation is very long well after ventilation also we have um, uh, pretty big issues with uh, uh, with rehab it is a very long process uh, of the rehab after after ventilation and of course the organism is pretty weak and it is a big problem to to regenerate and to supply all the body with oxygen uh, but not every time the intubation is possible so sometimes we need to make tracheostomy tracheostomy includes uh, a surgical procedure like invasive penetration uh, through the uh, through the trachea not through the mouth if if the oral cavity if the normal way is blocked and we cannot make intubation we are doing tracheostomy just to save the patient and this extra invasive procedure of course will increase the risk for uh, both surgical side infection and the ventilator associated pneumonia uh, surgical side infection as well as i told 15 percent of adult population are carriers of staphylococcus aureus in the nasal cavity which is uh, known to be the mostly spread pathogen in all the healthcare associated infections well um, oh, what else also you need to know about surgical side infections that uh, which infection can be considered as a, as a healthcare associated infection whenever you will find which is the pathogen you have to calculate which was the uh, minimal and maximal uh, incubation period because some patients can go home after the treatment and they can go they can get an infection in another place but they will say uh, that you uh, you infected the patient in the hospital so we, what we need to do in such cases we need to calculate independence of uh, of the pathogen we found in the uh, uh, in the patient we will calculate the maximal uh, incubation period if it will be included within this period in which uh, the patient were infected we can say we can talk about healthcare associated infection one more uh, suggestion for healthcare associated infection if this bacteria found in patient is multi drug resistant uh, in this case, also, we can suppose that the bacteria were found, were um, uh, contracted in the hospital. But the main main criteria for diagnosis of uh, healthcare associated infection, of course, is incubation period. Uh, which are the main reasons of health, healthcare associated infection? Uh, in the first place, we will uh, put skin and mucus lesions as well as we told that the first line defense um, is uh, is the skin and mucous membranes well whenever we have lesions uh, we have uh, opportunity to get a healthcare associated infection on the second place I put it invasive procedures which are actually can be together with skin and mucus lesions but here we are talking about them as a main uh, main disease of the patient but here we are talking about medical procedures which uh, requiring uh, the invasive procedures but actually the mechanism is the same the lesion of the uh, of the skin or mucous membrane on the next place we have lack of hygiene uh, the problem which is uh, highly discussed uh, today uh, worldwide wash your hands wash your hands by the way a lot of colleagues of mine are saying that from the moment we have coronavirus pandemic uh, we almost don't have any intestinal infections intestinal infections are known to be a uh, result of bad hygiene and especially a result of dirty hands so whenever we have lack of hygiene we also increase opportunity of getting some infections uh, another thing is antibiotic usage very uh, very wide usage of antibiotics which can produce MDR, XDR and PDR where DR is drug resistance and now we'll talk about the difference between them and uh, uh, and of course uh, using of the same disinfection substance or 
the wrong amount, wrong concentration of disinfectant substance. Well, if you will use not enough uh, quantity of substance or you will not apply necessary exposition of the substance, uh, you can uh, also produce some uh, resistant uh, bacteria. You can, be, you can uh, transform some bacteria into resistant strains and it will become a problem. Whenever we are talking about antibacterial resistance, we can talk about three different, different uh, levels of drug resistance. For example, here you can see the DISC method of sensitivity for antibiotics. Here you can see a few DISC, uh, discs with uh, filter paper and with antibiotic uh, dissolved in this paper. So in dependence of a sterile or clean zone around the disc, you can appreciate how good is this antibiotic uh, for this very bacteria. Everything with what is not transparent on the on the petri dish is actually bacteria. Here you can see colonies colonies of bacteria. Well, here uh, you can see that this antibiotic and every disc is marked with the name of antibiotic name and type of antibiotic. So here you can see that this antibiotic and these two antibiotics are the mostly efficient, this and this one are a little bit less efficient, and the mostly inefficient antibiotic here is this one. Well, you can see the bacteria is growing even on the antibiotic. It is not just inefficient with uh, for this bacteria, but actually uh, the bacteria can multiply on this antibiotic. Uh, well, on the first place we have multi-drug resistance. Multi means more than one. So multi doesn't mean necessarily too much, but more than one. That means that we, whenever we have uh, at least one type of, um, of antibiotic in three or more antimicrobial categories or types of antibiotics, we can talk about multi-drug resistance. For example, here we have an example of multi-drug resistant bacteria. When one is inefficient and the rest of them are more or less efficient for this bacteria. XDR or extensively drug resistance is a definition for uh, for bacteria which has uh, sensitivity just to one or two groups of antibiotics. For example, uh, for example, if here we would have everything like this and just one or two like this, that would mean like the majority will be resistant and just few of them, one or two, would be. Uh, Sense, uh, would have sensitivity. In this case, we would talk about extensively drug resistance. Almost everything is resistant. And BDR is pan drug resistance. The pan means universal or uh, worldwidely, independence of context. For example, pandemic. Coronavirus now became pandemic. So pan drug resistance is definition for 100% for universal antimicrobial resistance. So whenever we have a patient with a pan drug resistance, which also, such bacteria also can be called superbug or superbacteria. Superbacteria is bacteria with universal resistance. Everything MDR, XDR, and PDR are about acquired resistance. So every bacteria actually can pass this way from MDR till, till PDR. It's transformation, it's genetic mutation of the bacteria. Uh, which are reasons for MDR, PDR, XDR? On the first place, we have large antibiotic usage. If you remember, after 12, 11, uh, after after 9, 11, no, excuse me, after 9, 11, um, in USA, there was biological terroristic act uh, with uh, envelopes with uh, white dust and with spores of anthrax. Anthrax is pretty aggressive infection uh, produced by Bacillus anthracis. Uh, but it is uh, very easily treated with penicillin, with antibiotics. So a lot of people, uh, since you cannot buy antibiotics in the majority of countries, you cannot buy antibiotic without any prescription, but people became very panicked and very afraid of these uh, terroristic acts, and they were afraid uh, to not receive such uh, mail, such envelope with uh, white dust, with spores of anthrax. Everyone starts uh, trying to buy some antibiotics, and what they what what did they do? They went in Mexico and they bought all the antibiotics from them because they were selling antibiotics without any medical prescription. But it became another health issue. People started using antibiotics for prevention, and antibiotics should be used in the right way. 
like you should uh, prescribe right dosage uh, in dependence of the uh, of the age of the patient, in dependence of the uh, body weight will be prescribed antibiotic. And whenever a patient doesn't know and is using antibiotic without any prescription, the risk to use uh, antibiotic in the wrong way is very high. Unjustified in antibiotic usage. Uh, moreover, we can have uh, such uh, uh, such problem like abandoned treatment. Abandoned treatment is a problem when the patient is taking antibiotics and on the moment the patient understands uh, that he is feeling better and he stopped he stops the treatment the problem in this case uh, is the next one as well as we have incubation period which means uh, the period from the moment uh, the patient uh, got the, the person got the um, the bacteria or the pathogen till the moment the pathogen will multiply in the body uh, till that amount which will be able to produce some symptoms. So incubation period is a period without symptoms, but it already started infectious process in the body. So the same thing happens backwards during the antibiotic treatment. So you are getting antibiotic treatment and antibiotics are killing the bacteria inside the body. So step by step, anti uh, one uh, pill after another one or one injection after another one with antibiotics and the level of the bacteria will decrease in this um, will decrease in the body till that moment these bacteria will not be able to produce any symptoms because of its small amount so if you will finish if you will stop the treatment on this moment when you don't have any symptoms anymore uh, you are letting the rest of the bacteria to stay in your body and since these bacteria already had contact with this antibiotic next time the bacteria will change its uh, genetical structure or, or bacteria will start produce some substances which will neutralize the substance of antibiotic and in this way the antibiotic next time will become useless so this is the problem which uh, not every, everybody is aware about and uh, it can be or wrong antibiotic treatment or wrong antibiotic dosage or abandoned treatment and uh, how appears how appears uh, resistance? Uh, one of examples, the absence of structure which can be damaged by the antibiotic. So as well as I told, um, the antibiotic can change its structure. For example, some antibiotics are binding the bacteria through the receptors the bacteria has on its surface. So antibiotic make, makes connection through this receptor, it penetrates through the cell wall and it destroys cell wall, it destroys bacteria. Next time the bacteria will simply remove these receptors and the bacteria and the, uh, the antibiotic will not have any key, will not have any connection to this antibiotic and will not, to this bacteria and will not be able to, uh, to destroy this bacteria anymore. Uh, another way, the presence of an extra defense layer. Some bacteria can produce some extra defense layer or could have some extra defense layer. For example, um, uh, for example, um, uh, Mycobacterium tuberculosis has an extra defense layer, uh, the uh, waxy membrane, membrane of mycoic acid. It, uh, this membrane makes uh, a lot of antibiotics to be useless for this, uh, for this infection. Also, ability of bacteria to, neutral, to neutralize antibiotics. So, as well as I told, bacteria can produce next time some substances which will uh, neutralize the, uh, the antibiotic itself. So, it will not make any connection with bacteria and bacteria will uh, remain safe and sound. And, uh, and the, uh, the last uh, way of uh, resistance which can appear is uh, as a result of genetic mutation. Well. Uh, the metabolism of bacteria will be modified in such way that the uh, action of the, of the antibiotic will not be that critical anymore for bacteria. Uh, in this way, um, bacteria, the bacteria will simply live nearby the antibiotic uh, without having any, um, anything in common, and in this way, antibiotic will not be useful anymore. Uh, this is the way how it happens, uh, in, uh, uh, how, how it occurs uh, antibiotic resistance. Well, that's all on this topic. And if you have, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask.